The City of Hula Water Reclamation Facility is a 19 MGD capacity plant. We average about 11 MGD a day and it serves about 111,000 people within the city of Pueblo. We have approximately 60 employees that work within the department. The nutrient challenge at Pueblo was nitrogen and phosphorus and ammonia were all pretty high and they needed to lower it to meet the new regulations that were upcoming and do it in a cost-effective manner. Because of the nutrient challenge that the city is facing, a traditional approach would have required the, the addition of new reactors and clarifiers, which means a significant capital investment for the city. However, Brown and Caldwell partner with the city to develop and to implement an intensification process to reduce the capital and operational costs for the facility to meet the future regulation requirements. For most uh, biological nutrient removal, you need to use an external carbon source that adds cost, as well as some uh, safety concerns. As we were developing the plant, we were looking at how can we be self-sufficient? And that's when the AVN and the hydrocyclones came along. We do have the ability to feed chemicals, but our goal is not to. At Pueblo for advanced irrigation control, we use AVN control, which maximizes nutrient removal by um, using the influent carbon. Uh, as well as um, reduce energy uh, for aeration. And for selective wasting, we used uh, hydrocyclone, which retains microorganisms which are favorable for uh, BNR, as well as uh, selective wasting, uh, which promotes um, settling performance of activated sludge. As in any new technology and the adoption of any new technology in treatment facilities, there are challenges for operational staff to learn and to get used to the new, to the new processes. In the case of Pueblo, an intensified one it wasn't any differently. At the beginning, the operators had to learn how to operate and to control these new technologies, new processes. But after spending time with them, they actually embraced the process and learned how to optimize it themselves, making the project a, su a success. So actually being able to operate the solution, it's, it's fun to be able to go to the SCADA and you're able to look at, say, the ammonia versus NOx control. And you can see how the ammonia and NOx come together and they dance together to that inflection point where you know that the ammonia and NOx are as close to a one to one ratio as it can get. And as it varies, it always works back to that. Some of the experiences I learned is to be patient and is to be open-minded, which was hard at first. There's so much out there that I didn't know. It's easy after, I almost have 30 years in this, I, you get a, a, an attitude, I guess, I, I know this. And then as I see my young men working and solving problems and running trends, and I'm going, oh, that was a really good idea. Something you can learn from Pueblo is to look at new technologies that have been proven and that you can look at different technologies from different places to find solutions. There's new research and new processes that are out there, you know, and it, they're, they really are worth looking at. Intensify like solutions are a new param paradigm for wastewater treatment. Uh, it it uh, uses the existing infrastructure to the uh, maximum potential. Uh, at the same time, it saves operational cost, uh, reducing the overall carbon and uh, physical footprint uh, of, the, of the plant. By going with, a, with the hydrocyclone process, which was not traditionally, had not been used on a full plant in the United States, you know, and that, but it was very common in the European countries. We were able to remove the majority of the cost, you know, about a million and a half dollars to install it, and it, as you know, and it it was much uh, more affordable, you know, and at the point when the limits go down even further, it allowed a process that could be kept in place, not have to be removed. It can be kept in place and then do an addition at the end to do uh, phosphorus removal. Some of the main assets a superintendent can have is their people. My people are excited. And they love to look at the effluent because most of them are outdoors people. 
And they take a look at that and go, hey, we're really putting out a clean water and it's, it's beneficial for people down the river.